Good morning, everybody. It is November 29th here. Um, obviously, I don't even have to explain what this is. You guys know exactly what this is. This is the twin to Ashton's tractor. Well, just about. The tires are a little bit different. This is a uh, brand new, again, uh, 580 case uh, Steyr wheeled tractor. So Ashton's has uh, LSWs. They're 800 LSWs on 42 inch rims. These are Michelin Axio bib on 38 inch rims. That's the only difference, okay? Uh, these ones have more sidewall. Where Ashton's 42 inch rims, maybe they come down to here or something, have a little less sidewall. I, I've talked to my tire guy. A lot of guys really like their LSWs. I had these tires on my, I've had a couple of those Fent 1050s, I think I had three of them. And on two of them for sure, I had these Michelin Axio bibs and I really did like them. I ran, I squatted those tires right down. There were 750s and I put for sure three and I would actually squat them and put four bars on the ground. Like just run them like, like four PSI, next to no PSI and they pulled really awesome. Tractor didn't, tires did. <laughs> so we got to adjust the tire pressure clearly. Um, but I am looking forward to jumping from one to the next and seeing the difference in the ride, the height. Obviously, you can tell these ones are going to be lower because once you squat them down, you're going to get a pretty low pro ride. But they might, they should ride better. But again, we'll find that out. We'll find that out. Time will tell. So let's talk about the tractor for a second. I know you guys got a lot of questions like, uh, why would you get a 580 over a 620 or a 645? Why would you get one wheeled versus tracks? Why, why am I not seeing the 715 right here? Where's the big butt? How come we don't see a versatile, you know, is South farm, is this a South farm tractor? And so let's just answer some of those questions. Cause I know you guys got a ton of them. First off, let's summarize Ashton's. So Ashton's is a 580, uh, Steiger. And we, uh, sold my John Deere 9620R. Uh, triple tractor to dad okay now if dad didn't want to buy dad actually wanted to buy it so if he wouldn't have wanted to buy it no big deal i would have just sold it privately or i would have traded it on the case 580 so no big deal but dad bought it so that tractor will be coming down to the south farm and ashton's tractor will be going to the north farm as that is a north farm tractor this 580 is a south farm tractor okay um and in all transparency I did order the new Case 715 Steiger, okay? I did order the new 715. Realistically, it won't show up until summer of 2024. Um, maybe it doesn't even show up until October of 2024. It, it, it's it, Who knows when it will actually show up, okay? So then why, why wouldn't you have just kept 1167, used it for seeding, and then traded it out in... Uh, July or, or maybe even October, a year from now, um, when the 715 comes. Like surely you're going to take a massive depreciation hit by giving this thing back potentially in a few months of after seeding. And those are really good questions. And the reason is because I sold my 1167 back to the dealer. It was one of those deals where it just was a no-brainer. And uh, I didn't want to risk putting more hours or another whole seeding season on the 1167 and then... Uh, and then trading it off or, or taking a pile less money. I would, have taken, I would have taken a pile less money for it. So it was a no-brainer to get rid of the 1167 at that time. Obviously, you still need to have an intern tractor. So we picked up this 580. And now I should clarify, this is not a rental. This is not an intern tractor. This is, I lease all my equipment, or most of my equipment. That's something I choose to do. And it works well for me. It doesn't work well for everybody. Everybody's farm is different. And uh, so anyways, this tractor is mine. It's gonna stay here unless I trade. I don't have to take the 715. I, should, I need to make that noted. Like this is not an intern tractor, all right? If this thing blows my socks off, I'm super happy with this tractor. It rides awesome. And uh, maybe I don't want to take an extra payment on the 715. I don't have to take 715. I'm not locked into it. There's a long list of guys who want that 715 and all I gotta do is be like, you know what? I'm gonna give up my slot and it's sold. It's gone, just like that, okay? So that is the reason. And so, well, Mike, 
that doesn't answer why we you wouldn't have got a 620 or 645 you know okay 1167 is out of the way 715 is order why would you get a 580 and especially on wheels these two 580s ash and a mine were on the lot which means they were ordered a long time ago which means they were ordered under different price books better rates these tractors were a really good deal at the end of the day if I wanted to order a brand new 580 today, well, it probably wouldn't be a 580, a new one would be that 580, 590, whatever the new numbers would be. I would pay a pile more money, potentially potentially 100 grand more money, 75 to 100 grand more money, and then say another 100 grand for your tracks. So that's the reason. These ones were on lot, and the price was right, and they're matching except for the tires. So Mike, what about, can you talk about the depreciation hit? You can't just run this thing for 300 hours and give it back and uh, take something else. Uh, well, actually, that was well calculated because remember, I already had the 715 on order. It's still in order. It's coming. You know, uh, we don't know when, but it is coming. And uh, I have a set price on this 580. If I give this 580 back with one season on it or two seasons on it or even a half a season on it, I have a set price. I know it, the dealer knows it, it's right down to the penny and it's a good price, it's fair. So I can give this thing back with 50 hours on it, 100 hours on it, or 300 hours on it, and the price will adjust depending on how many hours I put on it, and it's a fair price, okay? That's the reason why. Well Mike, can we talk about the fact that you just picked up a brand new tractor at the South Farm and you clearly haven't taken a crop at the South Farm in three consecutive years? How is that possible? No crop, new tractor. No crop, now you guys are getting motions. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm actually reducing my payments. Uh, my 1167 payment was here. I just picked up this new 580 and it brought my payments down to here. Okay? So I'm actually reducing payments. I'm not adding to them, I'm reducing to them. I'm reducing them. So if I wanted the 715, you're right. It would be a little bit more than my 1167, but by golly, George, it ain't very much. If I wanted to keep my payments the same, get a 645, like comparable to my 1167. All right. So like these are a good deal. So that's the reason why I'm actually reducing my payments. So we're going to give this thing a rinse. It's got some dust on it, as you can clearly see. Um, that's not gravel dust. That is like. Yep, that is salty. Uh, uh, we salt our highways up here in uh, Saskatchewan, and it's terribly, terribly hard on your paint, so they need to be washed because it's super duper corrosive. But we're going to give this thing a wash, and uh, I told you best case scenario is maybe I keep the tractor. Maybe it just shocks me. Worst case scenario, I'm like super disappointed, won't pull the drill, just digging holes. No big deal. I already have a set price to send it back and pick up the 715 and I already know what my 715 payment is going to be. So we really won't know until we hook this thing to a drill and pull with it. Obviously it's going to be juiced up more. We all know that. But it's going to, it weighs the same. It's going to be 63,000 pounds. It is 63,000 pounds and change. We got the, uh, half filled suitcase weight. If I wanted to fully weight this thing, I could weight it to 67,000 pounds. A case quad track is coming in at 66,000 pounds. My 9620R weighs 61,000 pounds. So this is already weighing more than my uh, 9620 John Deere. And that uh, my brother's John Deere four tracks are weighing in at 60, same, 61,000 pounds, I believe. So this already weighs more than the, my brother's four tracks. And I believe it weighs about the same as the Fent, or as, as the Fent 1167. Sorry, I just both had a seizure there. Otherwise, everything else is the same. BTO, half full, not even. Half three quarters, half half. BTO. Yep, it's got the weights. Same as the same as Ashens. Hopefully I answered all your guys' questions. Probably didn't, probably missed a few. Got the carpet.
We got cardboard here. Let's fire it up. I will be putting John Deere, well, I hope to be putting John Deere guidance in this one as well. Like I said, not sure where I'm gonna put everything. And you guys gave me some awesome recommendations about putting stuff down here. Um, so I appreciate that. I'm leaning to that Gen 5 John Deere monitor, but it is pretty long. It's about the same size as this. Mike, why are you putting John Deere guidance in? A case tractor. Surely this Pro 1200 would be awesome. And I'm sure this Pro 1200 is awesome. I'm sure it is. But it's just handier if all my all, all of our guidance is the same. Throw some modems on these things so I can see it on the John Deere app. And uh, I don't know. That's just how I'm feeling right now. So obviously, Ash and I are both excited. Um, oh, I guess I should probably answer a few questions like why not Versatile, why not Big Bud, um, why not the new Xerion from Claws, and that's a really good question. Dealer support is number one. Okay, then why not John Deere? Because you got good dealer support from John Deere. I do got pretty good dealer support from John Deere as well, you're right. So it really comes down to John Deere and Case. Those are my best dealers, my closest dealers. Uh, I've got the best working relationship with those two dealers. Not to throw my Fent dealer under the bus. They're awesome too. I'll rephrase, I got three. And my Fent dealer also sells Versatile. But, I guess it's because I wanted to order the 715. At the end of the day, that's the tractor that I chose to order. It is the big boy on the block, and uh, Ashton is a red girl. She wants red, so she likes red, I should say. So that's the reason why. Nothing against versatile. Oh, and the big bud. The, re the problem here is, yes, it's got all cat components and all that fun stuff, but the dealer to it is down in the US. It's international. You know what it's like just crossing the border at the best of times, never trying to get parts, never mind trying to get parts from there? Unless there's a good servicing, literally just big bud dealership right close up here in Saskatchewan, I just don't see it practical for me. I'm sure for Nick down there, I'm sure that would just be perfect for him. Uh, even some of our American friends and neighbors. But for me, up here, across border, don't see it practical. Well, Mike, why don't you just go to your nearest Caterpillar dealership or whatever, and why would they come down? What have I ever bought from Caterpillar that they would even consider coming down to look at my tractor? Yeah, they'll come down after uh, I'm about the 30th on the list. No, that's just, and then who's, so what happens when my when that big button breaks down? Because everything does break down. Nothing against, I'm sure it's gonna be a great tractor, but it's gonna break down, man-made will. So when that tractor goes down, something major happens, I got an out, contact the dealership on the on, in a different country I know we're so close but that border is like seriously it's like stepping into a different country no Mike you don't say <laughs> oh you get the idea <laughs> oh man sometimes I just laugh at myself you gotta laugh at yourself sometimes but that's the reason why is uh this tractor goes down or my John Deere goes down, not that I have any John Deere tractors anymore, but my John Deere combine goes down, I will have a John Deere combine in my field that day. Worst case scenario, the next day. If I have multiples go down, they'll just keep on bringing them. So it's all about that dealer support, you guys. Dealer support is number one. So, I'm super excited to do a bunch of seeding with you guys, and um, we will uh, dump these tractors around a little bit just to test out the different rubber. 
So stay tuned for that. And like I said, everything goes around that comes around will come around again. Everything goes around. You know, we were wheels once in the past. Then we went to the 620 quads. We really loved the 620 quads. And then we went to John Deere 4 track. Now we're going back to wheels. And give us a little while. We'll be like, oh, no, we got to get out of these wheels and go back to tracks. Everything goes around. And that's not just us. That's everybody. That, we all like trying different things. And then we, then we were reminded why we didn't like those things. And then we go back. And then we were reminded ourselves again why we didn't like those things. So we go back. And that's just like... much air in these tires. Alright guys, stay tuned for more. I got a few more surprises for you. I'll catch you on the flipper. Adios amigos.